The differences in Middle East policy between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are stark. And it is most evident in two particular areas. One, in the context of the ongoing conflict in Gaza, and two, testy relations with Iran. Each leader's approach reflects their broader political ideologies and strategic priorities. How they deal with the Middle East, this in many ways would significantly shape US foreign policy should either one of them be elected the next president. On Crux Decode, we do a deep dive into the contrast in approach between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump when it comes to addressing the most pressing question, how to stop the war in Gaza. Kamala Harris has consistently emphasized humanitarian concerns in her approach to the Gaza conflict. Following her meetings with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, she has articulated a more strong stand on the need to protect civilians. She also wants to address the humanitarian crisis that has resulted from the ongoing violence. Harris's comments indicate a willingness to push for a ceasefire and a more balanced role for America in mediating the peace efforts. This could potentially reflect an inclination to adopt a slightly more strident stand than her predecessor, President Joe Biden. That is when it comes to specific issues relating to civilian suffering and human rights violations in Gaza. She's also repeatedly said that Israel does have a right to defend itself, but how it does so also matters. Harris is likely to continue the Biden administration's emphasis on diplomacy. She will seek to engage both the Israeli and Palestinian leaders in a dialogue. Her administration would probably focus on re-establishing trust with Palestinian authorities and will also advocate at the same time for a two-state solution as perhaps the only viable long-term resolution to this conflict. Now, this approach contrasts very sharply with Donald Trump's more unilateral support for Israel. And that often sidelines the question of Palestinian aspirations or even the question of human rights of Palestinian people. Trump's Middle East policy has been characterized by unwavering support for Israel, particularly under the current leadership of Benjamin Netanyahu. His recent meetings with Netanyahu, when Netanyahu was there for the UNGA summit, uh, it suggests that he would probably likely provide what some analysts describe as a blank check for Israel's military actions in Gaza. Trump has previously indicated that he believes that Israel should finish what they started. Now that implies that his support will be for more aggressive military operations without any significant American constraints. Now despite his anti-war rhetoric during his presidency between 2016 and 2020, which focused on reducing America's military involvement abroad, Trump has given unconditional support for Israel. And that does raise questions about how this aligns with his broader foreign policy principle, which is anti-war. His administration facilitated significant arms sales to Israel. It also recognized Jerusalem as the capital and shifted the American embassy there. These are actions that have explicitly solidified Donald Trump's pro-Israel stand. But it has also heightened tensions in the region, particularly with Iran. Now, on the issue of Iran, Kamala Harris would likely advocate for a return to diplomatic negotiations which are aimed at curtailing Iran's nuclear program. Given her background and the traditional stand taken by her Democratic Party, she may support re-entering the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action or the JCPOA. Harris's administration would prioritize multilateral engagement with all regional allies in order to address Iran's nuclear ambitions. Now, this could potentially lead to a reduction of tensions that could lead to some kind of military confrontation. Trump, on the other hand, his approach to Iran has been very combative. He withdrew from the JCPOA in 2018. He tore up that agreement. He reinstated severe sanctions against Tehran. If he is elected again, then Trump is expected to continue this hardline strategy and that could potentially escalate tensions further with Tehran. Trump's administration might pursue more aggressive measures against Iran while at the same time supporting Israeli military actions both in Syria and in Lebanon. If Harris were to be elected president during the ongoing conflict in Gaza, she would likely push for an immediate ceasefire negotiation. She would also emphasize on humanitarian relief and civilian protection. 
Her administration might also seek to leverage U.S. aid as a means of encouraging Israel to adopt a more restrained military tactic. She said so privately in phone calls with Israeli officials and also to aides of hers who work with Israel. In contrast, Trump's response could be far less focused on humanitarian concerns. He might advocate for a swift military action while downplaying civilian casualties, and that could align much more closely with Netanyahu's objectives rather than pushing for peace talks or finding an elusive ceasefire. Harris's administration would also likely emphasize on human rights as well as democratic principles in dealing with American allies in the region like Saudi Arabia. During her time in the Senate, Harris co-sponsored a legislation that was aimed at restricting arms sales to Saudi Arabia. This was primarily on the back of concerns of involvement in the Yemeni civil war and the Saudi murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. This, as expected, did not go down well in Riyadh. Harris has expressed support for the Abraham Accords, which normalized ties between Israel and several Arab states, including the UAE and Bahrain. However, she would likely approach these agreements with a focus on ensuring that Palestinian rights are also considered. She would advocate for a two-state solution, and that would be in direct contrast with Donald Trump's approach. Trump's approach has been characterized by strong transactional support for allies like Saudi Arabia and the UAE. His administration's policies were marked by significant arms sales and an unyielding backing of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, even in the light of the controversy that surrounded him around Khashoggi's murder. But there is one thing that is certain. Both leaders, whether it is Trump or Harris, who becomes the next occupant of the White House, they will face significant American public sentiment regarding America's almost unchecked support for Israel amidst rising casualties in Gaza. More than 40,000 Gazans, many of them women and children, are already dead. Harris may find herself navigating pressure from progressive factions within her party, which are advocating for Palestinian rights, and that could lead her to adopt policies that are more critical of Israeli actions than even those taken by Joe Biden. Trump, however, may leverage his relationship with far-right elements within Israeli politics. And remember, Netanyahu's coalition depends on these far-right parties. Trump might use that to bolster his position amongst Republican voters who favor strong support for Israel without any caveats, irrespective of the civilian fallout. Ultimately, should either leader assume office following the upcoming election, their distinct approaches will significantly influence U.S. Middle East ties. Harris's potential emphasis on diplomacy and humanitarian concerns contrasts sharply with Trump's unyielding support for Israel and aggressive posture towards adversaries like Iran. The implications of these deferring policies extend well beyond the immediate conflict. They will shape America's long-term role in fostering stability in one of the world's most volatile regions.